Hey guys, welcome back. So today I have a pretty special pistol to show you guys. The handgun I want to show you is the 7.5 FK by Bruno. Bruno is a small region in the southern part of the Czech Republic and that's where the gun is manufactured. The 7.5 FK is the new caliber that the firearm shoots. This is going to be a somewhat long video guys, but I, I Definitely encourage you to stick around and watch because we do a lot of different ballistics tests in this video and you're going to want to see them. So with that being said, let's get started. Let's get some velocity data from the 7.5 FK round. Now, keep in mind, it's a 95 grain copper bullet that's being fired out of the gun. We use our lab radar system here all the time for our ballistics velocity testing and it tends to be a very, very accurate system. I've tried the magneto speeds. I've had problems with it. I've, I've used just conventional sky screen uh, chronographs that have been around for decades. And this Doppler radar system is the most usable system I've found. And that's why we also carry them at Copper Custom. But what's neat about this is, is we can set how far out we want to track the bullet. So we have it set up right now for a muzzle velocity for just five feet in front of the muzzle. That's where we're, we're sure the Doppler radar is going to pick up that bullet. So we'll know exactly what the muzzle velocity is five feet in front of the muzzle. The other thing we found out that was really funny about this is it's very configurable. So you can set it up for velocities for archery, for a slow moving projectile like an arrow. You have a setting for handgun which is slower moving than rifle, the projectile. And then you have a rifle setting. Well, I had it set to handgun because this is a handgun, right? And we kept getting error messages saying it, it couldn't track the projectile. We thought, what the heck, did we break the lab radar? And then it dawned on us, the bullet's probably moving too fast and it considers, considers it a rifle. And that's exactly what's happening. The, the lab radar here is uh, thinking this is a rifle round. So we're gonna go ahead and wake our lab radar up here. We're gonna set it to record. And now we're going to fire five shots to get an idea of what this thing is doing at the muzzle. Here we go. Shot one. All right. 2082. 2061. 2076. 2077 <laughs> and 2064 and we have an average muzzle velocity five feet in front of the muzzle of 2055 feet per second so this thing is pushing that bullet consistently over 2000 feet per second that's pretty impressive i have a handgun shooting a 95 grain pill all right guys so we're gonna check this gun at 20 yards to confirm zero. We've been playing with it a little bit. The rear sight, what we call the butterfly sight, is adjustable, comes with the tools, and it also comes with, as I'd mentioned, I think maybe previously, but maybe not, a standard three-dot sight that you can swap this butterfly sight out with. I may wind up doing that in the future uh, because the butterfly sight's just a little bit hard for me. It's a brand new style of sight, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's different for me. So now instead of having a black dot where we were playing with earlier we're going to confirm zero in this gun now that we've made some adjustments to the site to see if we're on at 20 yards for the next part of the video That thing's dead nuts on. It's on, very on. All right, so we're good. We got her zeroed out with the butterfly sight. Just to give you guys a quick look, um, here we are at 20 yards, and these are my three shots I just fired. And you can see it's, it's pretty good. The average is gonna be right there for the group in terms of being uh, you know perfectly zeroed out. So there we go. Doesn't get any better than that. So one of the things I want to try is we have a 7.62 by 39 metal contract magazine loaded with 30 rounds of Wolf ammunition and a Chicom, you know, just magazine pouch. We've put an orange dot here, which I should be able to hit from 20 yards. And we have just some uh, clay. This is basically modeling clay. Uh, we're not trying to see how much damage it does to the clay. I'm just trying to see 
if it makes it through this magazine, it makes it through the rounds, makes it through the carrier, and actually does any damage at all to the clay behind it. We've left the clay in the plastic bag because it shouldn't make that much of a difference in terms of penetration. It's just we don't want to get muddy. <laughs> so what we're going to do, this is 20 yards, we're going to set it up just like this, and now I'm going to go back and uh, hope that I don't miss. What I'm about to do, do not do yourself, okay? We're doing this. I'd like to say that we're trained professionals, but what I'm doing is kind of idiotic, but I wanna know if this round will truly penetrate an enemy soldier's vest with magazines loaded because a rifle round will. Here we go. One round, weapon ready, going hot. All right, I could just barely see the target. I hope I hit somewhere near it. I couldn't hardly see anything. Let's go see what happened. All right, guys, it looks like I hit it. This is exactly how things fell. All right, it uh, looks like the ballistics clay, well, we'll just call it clay. It's not truly ballistics clay. You can see the damage that it did. The top block just got pushed. You can see, looks like I pooped on my finger. That's why I left it in the bag. Top block we can reuse, but it, it, look at the, it, it pushed, it hit with so much force, it pushed that magazine into it, giving it a U shape. This is much more dense, guys, than human muscle. All right, so it blasted through. It came out the back side. Um, so it's definitely lethal at 20 yards through an enemy vest. Right there, that's my, I'm pinching the magazine. It hit dead center right where we had the orange dot. All right, you can see it actually hit a cartridge. You can see gunpowder from that cartridge. Went in here, came out here on the back side. and is more than lethal at 20 yards. Guys, wow, um, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Now I don't have uh, a, a nine millimeter or 45 out here, but I'm gonna say, maybe we'll test this in a future video, a nine millimeter simply wouldn't have done that. A nine millimeter ball round may have came through, but it would not have blasted through all that clay and exited and made such a wound cavity that this did. It just blew the clay up and threw the other block off. So. Um, yeah, I'm impressed by that performance. That's something else. Let's take a look at how the 7.5 FK pistol ships. It comes in a hard plastic case, which is what looks to be airline approved. It has two locking tabs on either side, has a pressure release valve on it. Uh, it's every bit as good of the quality as a Pelican case. When you open the case up, on the inside, you're going to find a few things. First of all, you have a leather holster, a nice leather holster, and that's stuck into the top part of the foam. But beyond that, you'll have your pistol, which will have a magazine already in it, a second magazine, a cleaning kit, some tools, which are Allen wrenches, and then a different rear sight. And we'll talk more about that here in a minute. And then another recoil spring. So that's everything that comes in the box with the handgun. What we have here, guys, is Mr. Bad Guy that's been shopping on eBay, and he decided to buy some 2A body armor just before he committed his felony. And that's what we have here, 2A body armor. We do have one previous test shot here. Now, we've shot 2A body armor a lot. And this shot being here does not degrade the structural integrity of the Kevlar outside of this ring here. So right here, this is not being affected in any way whatsoever from this previous test. Now we also have a winter coat with a hoodie. So we're gonna shoot through this, through the coat. We're just gonna see if the round exits the back side of Mr. Bad Guy here. What we're trying to find out is, will this round effectively defeat 
two-way body armor, soft armor? Let's go find out. So we're 20 yards away from the soft body armor test, all right? We're going to go ahead and load up the 7.5 FK Bruno pistol. And now, let's see if we can defeat 2A body armor. All right, dead center of the target. Weapon is safe. Gonna lay it down. Now let's go down range, have a look-see. So the pasty stayed attached. We center punched it. And it went right through. It even hit a button. <laughs> we got lucky and clipped a button. And uh, we even got lucky and hit a two by four. You can see the wood splinters. We hit the two by four too. And uh, Mr. Bad Guy had a real bad day. This cartridge is impressive. Again, this is at 20 yards. The more I shoot this thing, the more I love it. Wow, 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 wow. That's cool. I love it. Let's talk about the features of the pistol. First of all, let's get the obvious out of the way. This is an early CZ-75, and you can definitely see that the gun, the 7.5 FK Bruno, borrows heavily from the CZ's design and a browning action. Now, whether or not CZ had anything to do with the design or engineering of the handgun, I can't say. But what I do know for a fact, I've been told by one of the engineers at Bruno, is that the Tanfolio company assisted them, and Tanfolio is another company that makes very good quality handguns. They helped them design the trigger on this particular pistol. This pistol's trigger breaks right at three, three pounds, which makes it a very light trigger pull. So the handgun, obviously, again, borrows very heavily from the CZ basic design. As you can see, when you hold the pistol and the hammer is back, you have a beaver tail back here that protects the web of the hand, even a gloved hand, anything. It comes way out there, protects you from any type of hammer bite. The gun does not have a decocker. So it's definitely set up for right-handed use. There are no ambi controls on the gun. If we take a look at the other side of the pistol, you'll see that you have your slide stop slide release right here, and then you have your manual safety. Now when this gun is cocked, the safety can be applied. I have checked that this weapon is empty. The gun can't fire. Pushing it down simply allows the gun then to fire. Okay, there is no hammer drop. You have to, if you wanna put the hammer down, you're gonna to have to do it manually and do that very carefully or just carry it cocked and locked much like you would a 1911. I will say that the detent, like a 1911, is extremely positive and I would carry this pistol cocked and locked, much like I do my 1911s. The slide stop and slide release also, just as the safety has, has a very large surface area, so it's easy for the operator to get their finger onto the controls of the gun. And let me go ahead and switch this around one more time. It's very easy to manipulate those controls. Now, the action of the gun, I'm gonna go ahead and take its magazine out Magazine holds 15 rounds plus one, so you have a total of 16 rounds that the gun can hold of the 7.5 uh, FK ammunition. The action on the gun feels like, it, it feels like it's on ball bearings. It's extremely smooth. I'm gonna set this magazine aside. Now, the other thing, I'm gonna go ahead and decock the pistol. Another thing that makes this gun different is the use of what the company calls a butterfly sight. The butterfly sight is like something I've never seen before. It's not intended to be used with this V-notch on the top. I was told to ignore that. The only part of the rear part of the sight that you're gonna use is the peephole or the aperture that's dead center. You'll notice there's airspace on either side. That's so you have a wider peripheral vision. But this sight, if you don't like it, the handgun ships with a more traditional three dot sight arrangement so you can take your butterfly sight out and slide in a standard rear notch sight, which is nice because I've been trying to get used to the butterfly sight 
it takes some getting used to, especially when you have old man eyes. It's a very precise sight picture. The front blade on this handgun is more narrow than most other front sights you're going to find on any other military handgun. Currently, it's more like old World War II era guns where you had those very, very small front sights. Well, this is thin, but it's tall and actually has a red dot in the front. And uh, again, it gives you a very precise sight picture. It does have a notch, or I can't really say a notch, but the contour for an offhand shooting position, which I don't know many people that still do that. Some people still prefer it, but that's kind of a 90s thing. And it does have a very big, easy to get to magazine release. Again, the magazine is a 15 round magazine plus one. To release the magazine, simply push the button and of course pull the magazine out. Now let's talk about this grip. The grip is made out of aluminum and it's anodized this red color. One of the things you're going to notice when you first pick the gun up is look how wide and flat the back surface of the handgun is. It may look like it's uncomfortable and perhaps to some shooters it will be. Me with my ape-like hands, I find this, this grip to be very ergonomic. One of the people I spoke with at Bruno told me that this was done on purpose. It's designed for the gun to be shot using the Weaver stance, which would produce the best accuracy. For me and my big hands, it feels good. I won't say that it's uncomfortable in the slightest. And I find the gun very easy to shoot. Now you'll also notice that it has slide serrations here and slide serrations up here. You'll also notice there's this big underlug and uh, you're probably wondering what that is and we'll show you in the next segment of the video when we disassemble it. All right guys, let's do one more thing. This is some Spartan Armor Systems plate armor and this is NIJ 3A rated. And you can see these are two nine millimeter rounds we've used in previous testing and they don't make it anywhere near through this plate armor. You can see the rear ends of the cartridges. So again, this does not compromise the integrity of this part of the plate. So we're gonna aim at this spot with a 7.5 FK. All right, let's see if it makes it through 3A body armor. All right, guys, one round of the 7.5 FK into 3A NIJ certified plate armor. All right, weapon is safe, and we will run down range. Let's get the magazine out there. Let's go take a look at this. <laughs> okay, guys. So here's the 7.5 FK. Here are the two nine millimeters, a little pinhole, a blowout in the back, 3A armor, dude. Wow, and this is, and the only thing holding this together at this point, guys, is the plastic bag. Otherwise, this would have just blown all over the place and there'd be no block left. I've shot enough of this. Look at the cavity inside here. This is the cavity. I mean, I can reach up all the way. I can, I, I can put my finger through it. It's not even a, a quarter of an inch thick. The cavity inside there is absolutely massive. Look at that. So, it went through 3A armor and is definitely lethal after making it through at 20 yards. Wow. I may start carrying this handgun at the store in case we get an armed robber that's wearing 3A armor. Oh, gosh. That is simply unbelievable. Unbelievable. I didn't think it would do it. Let's take the pistol apart and let me show you something about it that really, in my opinion, makes it unique. Stripping the pistol down is just like any other CZ type handgun. Drop the magazine out, make sure that your weapon is clear. This one is clear. I'm going to leave the hammer back. As with a standard CZ type pistol, you have a mark here on the receiver and you have a corresponding mark there on the slide. You want these two dots to line up. I accomplished that by putting my thumb through the trigger guard, pulling, making use of the front slide serrations, pulling it to the rear, the two dots line up. And now all I have to do with my index finger is push on this side of the pin, the cross pin, and it pops up and I can pull it out very easily. Once you have that pin out, now you can take the gun apart by pulling the two halves apart. 
Let's take a look at this upper assembly first because this is what really makes the gun unique. This thing right here weighs 4.6 ounces. It's a weight. And this attenuating weight sitting so low below the barrel, you'll notice I can stick my finger under the recoil spring. Usually you'll find your recoil spring almost touching, if not touching, the barrel on guns like the high power CZ75, 1911. Not in this case. They're trying to get that recoil impulse down lower into the shooter's hand and in line with their arm, the bones in their arm to get a good control of the pistol so they can control that mu muzzle rise of this very powerful cartridge, right? The whole point of this is to be able to fire this gun quickly and accurately, all right? And this attenuated weight system really does work, and you'll know that the first time you fire off the first round with a handgun. So taking this system apart is something that you'll want to watch me do here very carefully because I'm going to give you a tip that will make it very easy. If you just try to push this forward to take it apart, you're not going to be able to lift it out. It simply won't work. Grab the weight, grab the rear of the guide rod, push the two together simultaneously and lift them out and it comes right apart. Next, you're going to want to take your barrel out of the slide. Now guys, listen to me carefully when I say this. Be gentle and just slowly lift it up and pull it rearward and wiggle just a little bit. The tolerances on this thing are so extremely close that it's not like a 1911 or a, a high power where you just pull up and pull it out. Okay, so I'm going to pull up on it gently and I'm going to pull back and just kind of wiggle it. And as I pull up and wiggle, it'll finally break free. And now the slide is disassembled. You'll notice that it uses a 19 brown, a 19, a 1911 or Browning high power style locking mechanism. And it also has a very high power esque looking or CZ75 looking um, dropping link there. So uh, very, very familiar in terms of how it um, locks up. One thing that's unique about the gun, you know, there's a slight taper to the nose of the pistol, and this is how you get the, the uh, barrel out of the slide. You need that slight taper because the tolerances are so close, you can actually see a line around it when it's in full lockup that it's precisely holding that barrel in the same spot every time. Putting it back together is very simple. Also, you'll notice this gun does have full length guide rods that follow the full length guide rods that you can only see, it's, it's inverted just like a standard CZ on the frame. So you do have the slide fully supported by the frame of the pistol. Put the barrel in, gently wiggle it around until it drops down. Make sure it's all the way seated. Take your recoil spring guide rod, put the recoil spring on, take your weight with the small end facing that way, put them together and once again, push the two together drop the nose in and set the spring on its perch in the rear end. If you try to put the weight in and the spring in first and push this in and get it onto the perch, it's not going to work. Now, there's no real visual indicator, but you wanna make sure that that spring is perfectly parallel to the barrel before you put the slide and the frame back together. Otherwise, it'll bind up on you a little bit. All right, I'm gonna slide the two together. And again, you're gonna line up these two dots and put your pin in, make sure everything lines up. And now your pistol is reassembled. The 7.5 FK is a unique cartridge in that I've not been able to find a parent case. What seemed to be the most obvious of commonly available rounds was the 10 millimeter. The head size is pretty close to being the same, but the length of the brass case itself, the 10 millimeter is shorter. Therefore, it would not be possible to reshape a 10 millimeter into a 7.5 FK cartridge. So if you're going to reload for this, you're probably going to have to get brass from uh, Bruno, you're not going to be able to use another case and form it that I'm aware of. Some of you guys out there that are wildcatters will call me on that. I don't know. I'm not a, a wildcat type of guy and I don't fire form or form my own brass. So here is a complete cartridge. We, we, we took one apart using a kinetic bullet puller. The pulled bullet has a weight of 95 grains. You'll notice that the nose of the bullet looks like a hollow point. 
while it looks like a hollow point, it does not behave like a hollow point. The only reason that the, the copper machined copper bullet comes up and forms this hollow point is to maintain its ballistic coefficient so that it maintains its velocity out to 100 meters and maintains its lethality. Okay, so it has a higher BC than something like the 9x25 Dillon, which would be a very similar cartridge based upon my research in terms of muzzle velocity. But at 100 meters, this cartridge still maintains what I'm told, I haven't been able to confirm this yet, like 1,800 feet per second, 16 to 1,800 feet per second. So it's still able to punch through light armor, uh, a chest rig that an enemy soldier might be wearing, something like that. So when this round hits something, the copper that forms this hollow point is intended just to peel away, all right? And when that happens, this is what you get. Here are two recovered bullets from today's testing using body armor. The bullets start off at 95 grains, and both of these recovered bullets are 74 grains in weight with a few tenths of a grain here and there. They both weigh out at 74 grains. So you'll see that the nose of the bullet just peels away and leaves you with a 74 grain projectile that is capable of penetrating a lot of stuff. Guys, you can't make this stuff up. Peaches, my Jeep. When you dig around in peaches, you never know what you're gonna find because it's literally my office. Well, I did happen to find a nine millimeter handgun, which is the Beretta M9A3, a handgun I love very much. And I was just out shooting and I, it was underneath the rear seat. And to join it is some American Eagle 124 grain NATO-ish spec ammo. So uh, what we've done is we've loaded the Romanian mag pouch up with 30 rounds, once again, of Wolf ammunition. Lean it up against a clay block, and we're going to hit it right there. And we're going to see what the difference is between the 7.5 FK and a standard 124 grain military ball round fired out of a 9mm. This should be interesting. Guys, I simply can't see the target at 20 yards with the weather conditions out here. It's very foggy, as you can see, and the condensation's horrible. What I'm about to do, once again, is extremely dangerous. Do not do what I'm doing. Um, always wear eye protection, especially when you're shooting at things that are metal. There's a very good chance a bullet can come back and hit you. Uh, this is not smart. All right, so here we go. One 124 grain. NATO 9mm ball round out of the Beretta M9A3. All right, weapon is safe. Let's run down range and see what we, what we got. All right, guys, let's see what that NATO round did out of the 9mm Beretta. I was aiming here. I hit a little bit low, but I definitely connected with the magazine. Take a look inside. Look on the back side and nothing this is where it hit you can see it, it dented right here and it did, made an impression in the clay so there's no penetration out of the romanian mag pouch i try not to cut myself there's a lot of metal shards in here try to lift it out gently without cutting any part of my digits all right there we go nine millimeter round one in there does not look like we hit a bullet so it didn't even hit a steel cased bullet so it didn't even pass through as much metal and then here on the back side we see the magazine spring a little bit of the follower I don't see the bullet inside just a bunch of unburnt powder I see it there it is I don't know if you're going to be able to focus on this. The bullet is inside the magazine. It's actually inside there. Didn't even make it out the other side. That's why we didn't see an exit wound. So it just pushed these springs out and broke the follower and didn't even go through. If it would have actually hit a round, it wouldn't have torn the back of the magazine as much, but the bullet did not make it out of the magazine. The FK most certainly made it out of the magazine and made it through an entire block of clay and blowing it apart. So definitely more powerful than a nine millimeter by a wide margin. 
The ammunition that we get here in the United States isn't the same ammunition that's being issued to NATO troops. We have a goofy federal law that prohibits certain materials from being used in the construction of a bullet. The bullets that we get here in the United States are machined from copper. The bullets that are used overseas have a brass component to them, and that's what the difference is. Brass is considered an armor-piercing uh, metal substance and therefore banned under U.S. law, so we can only make the rounds out of copper and lead. They've machined a copper projectile. Now, this cartridge, despite the fact that armor-piercing handgun ammunition is, Ill is illegal, this round is perfectly capable of penetrating soft armor up to 3A, and that's using a copper bullet. And what we've learned before in our past testing, guys, is that speed kills armor. The faster you push a projectile, regardless of what it's made from, the more likely it is to penetrate body armor. For example, the 7.62x25 Tukriv, in a past video, you've seen us defeat level two body armor with a standard military ball round that is not considered to be armor piercing. I hope you guys enjoyed learning something about the new 7.5 FK Bruno pistol and cartridge. In my opinion, this is something that's truly new and interesting on the market for 2018. Now, the downside, of course, is the cost of the first 1,000 pistols. These things retail for over $7,000. That's the reason this is a T&E pistol. T&E means uh, testing and evaluation pistol. They sent these handguns out to a number of gun riders to evaluate, and uh, that's how I came into possession of the handgun. But overall, the ergonomics, the shootability of the handgun, everything about it, the quality of machining, uh, its performance of the cartridge, are outstanding. I'm thoroughly impressed with the handgun. We had zero malfunctions with the handgun. The handgun points and shoots quite naturally, but then again, I'm a CZ fanboy. I admit to that. And uh, this looks an awful lot like a CZ. The gun's a bit heavier, right around three pounds, but it also has a stock that's available for it. So you will be able to SBR the gun. And uh, in my opinion, this would make a very fun handgun to take hog hunting down in Texas. I'm hoping I'll be able to do that. So stick around. Hopefully you'll see more videos of this handgun in hunting videos, but I plan on doing a few more videos with the gun just in general because I find it to be such an interesting handgun. Guys, you can support us on the Military Arms channel by swinging by and checking out our Patreon page. There's a link down below, but click that link, follow that link, watch the video, and there's explanation of what Patreon is and how it helps us not only consider supporting our channel, the Military Arms channel on Patreon, but also please consider supporting other channels on Patreon if you consume their content. Another way to help us out is to swing by and check out our online gun store, which is Copper Custom. And you can find us there at coppercustom.com. Guys, this is our 10th year and we're uh, celebrating that quite a bit. We're actually pretty happy that we've made it 10 years here on YouTube, despite the fact YouTube is trying to kick us off, striking our accounts, taking our money away, but we're not giving up. We're here for 10 years, and I hope we're here for 10 years more, assuming YouTube is still relevant in 10 years. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all those years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.